We think this is the most advanced way of building a fibreglass boat here in Australia and uh, we'd be the leaders in WA of resin infusion. Andrew here from Shockwave Powercats. We're here in the factory today um, just watching the final stages of the resin infusion process of one of our 10 metre hulls. So what we have here is our 10 metre mould. It's sitting up in our rotating jig and uh, the boys have spent the last three days um, stacking the laminate into the mould. Um, it's the same laminate that we'd use for a survey boat and it's all bagged down now. It's under full vacuum and uh, it's all been leak checked and it's ready for infusion. If you're wondering what's under the bag, we've got um, a number of different layers that go into building the laminate structure. We're using a combination of chop strand mat and woven rovings. We've got multiple layers of each and we end up with a laminate of about uh, seven to eight mils thick on the side and then up to about 15 or 16 mil thick through the keelson and where the overlaps are. These are all stacked in order into the mould. So we've got back here somewhere, we've got gel coat, we've got our tie layer, then we've got um, chop, stitch, chop. We then have a layer of sorit, which gives us, as I said, the panel thickness, and then stitch, and finally a layer of chop over the top. In order to get the bag off when we're done, we put a peel ply, which is uh, like a, a satin sort of fabric. The resin tracks you can see here, this green um, anchor channel, and then finally we finish off with the, the bag, which we can pull our vacuum down under the bag. The laminate structure that we're using, or laminate schedule that we're using here, has been uh, specified by the naval architect. We've built surveyed boats using the same laminate structure, and that gives us the strength that we're renowned for, but it's also lightweight. The beauty of doing um, resin infusion, doing it all under a bag and under vacuum, is the reduction in wasted resin that goes into building the product. There's a whole multitude of benefits to infusing a boat, but for us to reduce our resin ratios from at best two to one, back down to one to one resin to glass ratio, means that we're saving about 50% on the resin that goes into building the boat, which is all weight. And the resin itself is brittle, so um, if it's not needed to be there, it's better off not being there. If you're struggling to keep up, we're looking at the inside of the boat. It's sitting in a cake tin, that's our mould, so we make the cake and then we'll take the cake out of the mould and, and you'll end up with a finished polished boat. And we're now at the point where we've applied vacuum. There's a vacuum pump running outside that pulls uh, 30 inches of, of vacuum down onto the product. Um, and you can see we've got a vacuum hose coming in here from our plenum. We've got the resin feed lines running into our resin drum. And uh, once we open the clamps on the resin feed lines here, the atmospheric pressure is going to push the resin through those lines and be drawn through as well under vacuum or the, the difference in pressure between the atmosphere here and the vacuum that's under the um, bag. And that'll draw the resin through the laminate. The whole process only takes about 20 minutes to infuse one side of the hull and uses about uh, 80 kilos of resin. It's going to flow really quickly and smoothly through the laminate. Um, it's got a really low exotherm, so it cures slowly and steadily, which gives us great results. The stuff's produced here in Australia by um, Nuplex, and we're proud of using really high quality products. All of the magic happens under the bag. It's not exposed to the atmosphere at all. So it's a much safer, much more pleasant environment for our guys to work in. There's no free particles of resin or styrenes, VOCs, volatile organic compounds that are uh, atomised into the air. So it makes the workshop a lot safer um, and comfortable place to be. Better for the environment as well. Uh, we're doing the hull in um, essentially three major components. Today we're doing the port side of the hull. If we sat the mould down on the floor, um, we'd be stacking up a vertical wall. We've got to try and glue or you know, use our contact glue to hold all of that laminate in place. There's quite a bit of laminate in thickness and weight once that's all stacked up. Um, and also once we're into the uh, stem area, um, there's not really any room to work. So if we were going to try and infuse this in one step, um, in one piece, it certainly 
technically possible, but physically challenging. At the end of the process, each of these layers culminates into uh, the hull laminate. We've got here um, part of the, the hull laminate. This was cut out of the keel to fit the um, three kilowatt MR transducer into a Raymarine system that we, um, we built recently for a charter boat operating out of Tasmania. Um, and you can see the overlaps, you get a good cross section as well. We can see the gel coat, that was a grey hull that we did. So it's gel coat, the tyre layer, and then the three layers of chop and stitch, followed by the SORIC, and then the two layers, the chop and the stitch on top of that. Uh, one of our guys did the first resin infused hull in the Southern Hemisphere, and that was in 2003. We've done, I think, 16 hulls here um, since then. We've certainly got it down to a fine art. For anybody that's not experienced, there's plenty of pitfalls. So, um, you know, essentially 1% error is 100% failure. There is always the risk, and we've certainly seen the same with some of our competitors previously, where if something goes wrong, potentially it is a bin job of the whole product, and we'd, we would need to start again, and it's a really expensive and time-consuming product to lose. Yeah, so tomorrow we'll take the bag off, um, and then it gets, uh, we'll peel off all the resin tracks. Unfortunately, that's all wasted, so it's all got to go in the bin. And then uh, we'll give it a quick sand, scuff it up just to remove any dags or wherever we've got pleats in the bag. They tend to leave little ridges in there, so we'll sand all of that off. And then uh, we'll get the apprentice in to run his balls over it and just make sure it's nice and smooth. Um, the next step will be to infuse, stack and infuse the centre section, which is the, the inside of the tunnel. Um, we've then got the stems to infuse, which links everything up the front together. Um, and the transom, where in this case outboards will be bolted on. We'll frame the boat out and fit all our fuel tanks. We've got a pretty solid um, transverse bearer that we infuse here. This um, links the back of the boat together and, and um, ties in the engine wells. So that'll sit roughly here and runs all the way across the back of the boat from port to starboard. It holds the deck up, holds the sides of the boat out and also um, stiffens so it'll take the thrust load of the outboards. This is a sample of the transom once it's all complete. And we've still got the SORIC and, and glass in there. And then there's two layers of ply. Ply's got a density of 800 kilos per cubic metre, which is better than the closest um, synthetic products like um, Thermolite that we can get. It's a lot stiffer and it won't compress anywhere near as easily so we can really bolt the engines on nice and tight um, and you won't see the transom sinking and collapsing over time. Once this is all bagged down um, the resin is, is um, drawn into the timber through the vacuum infusion process so all of that timber is sealed. There's no risk of it um, rotting or having any delamination issues so we get all the benefits of having timber with all the benefits of having a synthetic transom core. This is the plug that we cut out of the transom for the, um, for the engine well drains. Um, so you've got two layers of 18mm ply with resin and glass between, and then uh, the trim panel on the inside which is infused, and the hull laminate on the outside. Um, if you're wondering what the bum crack is in the mould, that's our wave breaker that runs right from the, the bow all the way back through, it's a full length wave breaker. And then if we look down into the tunnel of boat we've recently taken from the mould, um, you can see the beautiful, highly polished wave breaker um, that runs all the way down through the tunnel. And that gives us strength and rigidity in there um, and also just reduces that wave action and slapping that cats are quite often known for um, and also really cuts down on the spray through the, through the back of the tunnel. The resin infusion process that we use here is not only just for the hull and the floor, but that carries on through into a lot of the fit out components as well. So there's benefits of resin infusion. There's a lot less shrinkage. The products are, are easily repeatable and we've designed all of our molding systems using um, 3D models, which means that we can produce a product that's identical and then we can use a modular construction technique to deliver uh, customised results. Uh, so we've infused a whole bunch of components to build the boat and at some point they all need to come together. And typically boats used to be held together with bog, which is brittle. If you're lucky it might be bog and tape over the top, but all of these things lead to floors that come away 
from the hull or fr frames or bulkheads that come out. Crestimer has come out with a, a adhesive product that we use here in house. We glue the roof to the wheelhouse, we glue the wheelhouse to the hull, we glue, glue the frames into the hull, we glue the floors in. We do infuse some components and we also tape over some components. The advantages of the uh, Crestimer adhesive come into play are its elongation up to 300% before a failure. We've had no failure, structural failure in testing here. We've done some pretty extensive testing in-house. It's always a failure of the substrate, not a failure of the adhesive. These boats have been tested to the extreme. We've got thousands of hours on our um, Reliance series. It's the same hull with the local Fremantle, Coburn, Volunteer Sea Rescue groups. They've, these boats have been torture tested and they've certainly come out on top. I'm Greg Kowalski. Uh, I'm a marine draftsman. I've been involved in the Break Sea project since its inception. Um, we had an idea to do a fast cab version um, with a bed up forward uh, and over a period of time we developed in, a boat into uh, what you see in front of you. It's roughly 10 metres from nose to tail. We generally do it with about 300 horsepower aside outboards, can sleep four and is generally pretty quick, anywhere between 45 and 47 knots. Absolute weapon of a boat if you ask me. A few distinguishing features of the 10 metre brake sea that we're on at the moment. Each of these bulkheads that we've got, they're fully sealed and glued in place. It gives us nine watertight compartments down either side of the boat. So we've got 18 watertight compartments. We've actually got CNC cut frames that go all the way through the boat. All our floors are also CNC cut and fitted. In each of these compartments, we've actually got separate floors underneath. These are all airtight compartments all the way through to the boat, so you can effectively rip the bottom of the boat right off and still sail home, so it's quite a good safety feature. Next step is to fit our polyethylene fuel tanks, uh, which are fitted in. They're 400 litres a side, um, which gives you quite a long range. 300, 300, 300 nautical miles, um, which is quite a lot for this size boat. As you can see, the, the dead rise on either side of the sponson um, is different, there's less dead rise on the inboard side of each of the hulls and that reduces the pressure in that area and then allows the hull to ride up into a turn nicely. It's an absolute no-brainer to do a 40 knot turn, full hard over and it'll do it in any weather you like. The shape of our tunnel is not something that to the naked eye you'd ever notice and you probably couldn't measure it with a tape measure but if you look the two hulls are are towed out slightly. The tunnel's quite a lot broader at the bows than it is down at the transom here. As the boat's moving forward through the air and, and there's water running down through the tunnel, it's carried by the air that the, the boat's passing through and the air that parts at the front of the boat needs to meet again at the back, the same air particles. So the air that rushes through the tunnel has got further to travel, it's a longer distance to move, so that increases the speed which takes the water the moisture with it and then it meets together well out behind the boat after the boat's passed through that area and, and so does all the, all, the, all the spray meets out the back as well rather than rolling back in like the shark cats and, and so on of yesterday. Sorry Trav. Another factor with, with our hull, the, the 10 metre break sea that we're on now, the buoyancy, the, the, the hulls are quite full up in the stem, the, the forefoot's quite slender which does give us good ride into the sea but that broadens out fairly rapidly into a, a nice buoyant bow section which gives us a really good ride into a, a head sea but also a very reassuring ride in a following sea which is not characteristic of cats at all. And the other thing to note with this thing is you can see it has quite a lot of flare in the front of the boat that keeps the front of the boat and the windshield nice and dry. We've been out in these boats in all sorts of weather and it's pretty rare to get green water over the front of the boat. A little bit of spray down the sides, maybe, but generally it's an extremely dry boat. It's one of the things that this boat has that not many other catamarans that I've seen have is this, this wedge on the bottom of the boat. This actually acts like a big planing strike. Um, it means it, it goes along far better than it possibly should. So the more lift we can generate, the less weight we've got, the higher the speed's going to be. Um, so resin infusion and planing planks all work hand in hand to give us the performance that we get, which is again not typical of cats.
also means that if you do end up having to park the boat uh, on the beach or whatever, you've actually got a nice, a nice base to park the boat on. It's not going to get, you know, it's not going to get stuck because it's actually got a reasonably flat spot. We've got boats that are currently parked for half of their life on the beach um, and they haven't had any issues. As we go through the build process of the boat, the boat's sitting on load cells at various stages in the build, and we keep a really close eye on the um, on the weight of the construction as we as we move through it. So, um, at the latest the latest measurement on this hull that I'm on at the moment was um, 2,020 kilos, and that's all the fiberglass components complete. So the rest of that uh, 1,100 kilos or so comes in and fit out glass engines, etc. Being completely resin infused, the boat is practically strong as aluminium and half the weight, doesn't corrode, actually is surprisingly sound deadening as well so it doesn't ring or bang, like just an absolutely brilliant boat. Each boat that we build uh, we spend well over 2,200 hours of labour in-house. In we also rely on a few select contractors that we work with locally but all of that experience comes together to build such a highly polished, highly finished, immaculate, super yacht quality boat um, right here in WA.